hello everyone welcome to another episode of an incredible talk show brought to you by the indian football portal now today we have with us a person who has accomplished so much that i have had to make a list on my computer to you know just read it out and introduce that person because it was just too difficult to memorize so many things so today we have with us a person who has twice won the national football league once an i league twice a federation cup and twice the saf cup we also have a player who has won aiff player of the year and i league best defender introducing mr gaurav mangi singh hello sir how are you i'm very fine thank you yeah how are you guys all good all good doing well okay over to you ran okay so it's a it gives me immense joy to interview someone who i grew up watching a, a player who was at the national team he was he he replaced i mean i'll, I'll be very direct to say he replaced a combination of mahesh gauli and deepak mondal and then became a superstar defender for the indian national team for over 70 caps uh, so the first question to ask you uh, mangi bhai let's go into where you have come from so you come from a town called awang sekmai now not many of us have heard about this region so could you enlighten us on what the infrastructure is like what the facilities are like and the football culture is like in in that region please uh yes uh, i come from this uh, little town called awang sekmai uh when it, when you when you talk about infrastructure it's a very basic uh and uh, but we talk about the culture then uh being from manipur and football is very much part of uh, part of the culture there and i was very lucky and fortunate uh, that i got i got introduced introduced to the game uh, very early on my uh, you know early on in the and in my life and uh, it is as uh, you know like you will find everyone play the game whether it's uh, whether it's small children or at adults because we have we are very much uh, we are easily access to the open fields there uh so it was it was much easy growing up uh just playing football and uh, with with the friends and so but again it's a very uh <clears throat> it's a, it's a, such a lovely it's a lovely place and i i would like you know kind of suggest you all that whenever you get you guys get time you go should visit it because the atmosphere the culture is very different and today we talk about uh, even the uh, like the village football there with whether you call it uh, like like guy football which is like a locality games uh, the energy if we talk about uh, it's 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 something that i'm sure that many people uh, haven't experienced it and it would be nice i mean uh, if you all at some point uh, get opportunity to to come down and and then yeah experience that Great. Are there any are there any players apart from you who have got out of Avang Sekmai? Yes, uh, <clears throat> uh, we have. If we talk about the national at the national level, then we have uh, one of our senior who is uh, his name is uh, Balin Balin Singh. So he uh, he uh, was the he was from the first batch of Tata Football Academy. so uh, he was some sort of an inspiration to all of us growing up uh, because he was the one uh, like who got the exposure uh, and the, then follow with the renedy uh, and the we have other like teachers and today we have uh, surchandra who was with is bengal uh, this uh, so we all come from uh, this little town called awang sekmai and football is very much part of our growing up years uh, so yeah these are these are the these are the names who who made it uh, to the national or uh, the international uh, football and uh, they are they are very much yeah that's really nice really nice to hear now you had mentioned about yourself you know being a young player now you have got a distinction of uh, representing the national team not just at senior level but from under 17 under 18 under 20 under 23 level and then to the men's team now this question is for many of many of the young footballers who take inspiration what is the pathway like to transition from each age group going ahead 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 and then finally to the national team uh <clears throat> one of the most important things is the discipline without without discipline uh, i don't think so you can you can make it and also realizing at the uh, at the early age 
uh, what are you good at and what are you not so good at. So that basically, I mean to say uh, your strength and weaknesses, something you need to realize uh, from the very early age and having that discipline. Uh, it, discipline, it can be on the pitch and off the pitch as well. So on the pitch, definitely you need to understand, uh, you know, learn as much as you can, the sooner the better for you, uh, you know, about the game, uh, which will help you going forward. And uh, also at the same time, off the pitch about, about you know, being, being, being professional. I mean, having the little idea about, of course, when you are 17, 18, you are trying to understand what does it mean uh, to be part of a senior dressing room or a professional dressing room. But you have to have an idea, uh, you know, kind of how, you know, how, how we should go about it. So your preparation, uh, your, your everything. Uh, so you need to have that discipline. So I, I guess uh, I work really hard. Uh, you know, it, it takes a lot of uh, hard work, of course, to, to reach or achieve something. Uh, but I think it's, it's, it's. I think it's even more harder to to stay there. So, it's not about just when you make it to the under seven and you are very happy that okay, finally you got you got to make it. You know, in the in the in the squad, then it's going to be like because you want more, you want to be part of the under eighteen, you want to be part of the under twenty, under twenty three. So it's like the you know the desire increases and you you want you want to be part of it. So you you, you work harder, and uh, so that's again without the discipline, I think uh, you can't you can't do that. So I think when when I look back. So I think it's all about that how much I want it and you know the discipline and trying to do the right things, understand the game, learn it faster than you can. So I think that's all. I think that's a very basic things, but which are the important and the core thing for you to make it to the to the to the to the highest level. Okay, so just to recap, so there are three golden things that you emphasize on. One is discipline, second is hard work, and third is never be happy, always want to do better, which is really nice. Now yep. another thing that's really unique about you. You have played for some of the best clubs in India. Now, amongst those, you have played in Kolkata, Mumbai, Goa, Meghalaya, Chennai, Pune, as well as in Manipur. Now, if we have to compare the footballing culture, what is it like in all those cities and which city did you enjoy the most? Uh, Ryan, I think it will be unfair and also I can't, uh, I can't compare, uh, you know, uh, I can't compare among the cities or I can't compare among the clubs because uh, you know, I had unique experience from all the clubs or the cities, uh, the clubs that I played or the cities that I live. Uh, but yes, uh, say for example, if you take about Manipur, for example, because I come from there and I know the people there, so I had a different experience playing. You know, towards end of my uh, you know career, playing career. Uh, say when I when I'm in Goa, uh, because I I spent my I think seven years in Goa playing for. Uh, playing for Churchill and playing for Dempo, playing for Sporting. So I had a different experience there. And Chennai, Pune, everywhere I went to, and Kolkata, I can't, uh, you know, I can't forget Kolkata. So, but all cities got a unique life that I had a unique experience. And one thing that was very similar, it's, it might be a little more, it might be a little less, but that uh, undying support from the fans that was, I guess, was unique because, like I said, again, some cities got a little more support, maybe a little less support, but those fans would come to the stadium to watch games or follow the games. That is, that is something that probably that's what uh, even today the Indian football is going ahead. And the, when I look back, I still do have uh, many, uh, like, football fans or rather who reach out to me when I was in all those different cities even today i i do have conversation at times with them when i when they, when they write to me or reach out to me from all these the you know the the, the cities you mentioned so i mean for me to just tell one city is uh, better than uh, you know the other so that will be i think a little unfair but uh, yeah it's uh, i had a great great experience i think i was lucky fortunate enough to represent those those many uh, clubs and you know to at least got the opportunity to live and experience uh, all the all those cities so you've enjoyed all the opportunities. Now my next question is, uh, now you are you are a graduate of the very, very highly esteemed Tata Football Academy. You are also a coach now, so I think you're the best person to ask this question. So there was a time when, when Tata Football Academy were a conveyor belt for the best of players, including yourself who would do a few years over there and then get signed up at top clubs and then represent the nation. In recent years, we have noticed that the the effectiveness of that is not as much as it was before. Tata Football Academy are producing players, but not at the same with the same impact that they did before. What do you think is the reason for that? Uh, yes, they. I mean, TFA had uh, you know 
enjoyed the, the success and uh, they have produced so many uh, international, uh, you know, in I think till till mid 2000. And, uh, but unfortunately uh, today, as you also clearly mentioned that uh, maybe they don't enjoy as much as uh, that, uh, you know, success when it comes to producing more talent. Uh, but I think it's just, uh, maybe just because today, uh, then it was only TFA. It was TFA was the only institution of the academy, uh, which was proper like structure and streamlined. And the uh, but with time, uh, today we have so many other academy uh, institution everywhere uh, all over the country. So the competition increases. Uh, that's what I guess. And the, so I think it's just a matter of time for the TFA to just look back or reflect on what went wrong in the last few years that we are not, uh, uh, you know, not at the part of some of the uh, like very um, well decorated academy uh, that we have today. Uh, but I do believe not just because that I was from TFA, uh, because just, just see that the, the Tata Football Academy, the, you know, the name associated itself, the name is Tata. Like, you know, so it's just a matter of time for them to say, okay, fine. You know, we're just letting uh, behind a little bit in the last couple of years. So it's just a matter of one decision for them to just make and uh, say that, okay, we're going to go about it again. So uh, I still, still to believe and strongly believe that uh, they will definitely uh, come back again strong and, you know, being, continue uh, being one of the biggest supporters of the Indian football uh, going forward. We hope so. We hope we need more and more academies so that the senior team has a bigger pool. Uh, you are a, one can call you a champion. A champion in its truest sense because you have won the National Football League, the I-League, the Federation Club at, Cup at club level and at international level you have won two SAP Cups, two Nehru Cups, one AFC Challenge Cup. Individually you have won the AIFF Player of the Year Award the I-League Best Defender Award. Also, you have been one of the highest paid players in the I-League history. Now, in order to achieve all this, how did you live your daily life? And what's your work ethic been to achieve the success? Ryan, so honestly, wow, it's just uh, so much that, like, you know, you just, it was too much. I mean, just when you put it in the list, uh, too much really. <laughs> really. Uh, but, uh, when I look back, it was, it was, I think purely because of my discipline, uh, and also the kind of lifestyle, a very calculated lifestyle that I uh, I lead, and also I followed uh, in my I think some 15, 16 years of my playing career, uh, because everything was calculated. When I say calculated, off the pitch, for example, uh, the, the, the the amount of hours or time that you, you get to sleep, you know, what are we going to eat or not eat, uh, your recovery, uh, your gym sessions, when you're going to go. Uh, so everything was calculated. And uh, also everything, what, why, why you do all this preparation and the calculation is because eventually you wanted to be always there and make available for yourself for the selection, for your game or for your, for your match or for, for any, anything. So, uh, but doing that and you love it and there was never... A moment where you feel like you're pressure, you feel pressure, or you're not enjoying that. You you love that. You're doing that, and for you to do that for uh, for like 15, 16 years, it's not it's not easy. Uh, you know, it's not it's not easy, but uh, you love it. So that, that's why what I'm trying to say is the discipline, uh, the kind of lifestyle that you 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 find a way to lead, uh, and I think that 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 was I think one of the only reason uh, for you to. Uh, make it there, make it at that level, uh, being competitive, doing it over the years, after years, uh, trying to be available for all the league matches, for all the national team matches. So, uh, yep, yeah, it's just a, a, a disciplined lifestyle, I think, make it possible, made it possible for you to achieve, achieve that one. Yes, a journey of great weight. Now, uh, your, you, your career kicked off after a very successful stint at Churchill Brothers where you had a really good spine. There was Arindam in goal, you in defence, Kalu in midfield, Odasa in strike. Then you went on to make a very, very big money move to Prayag United. Now, as footballers, dealing with criticism, dealing with pressures is an everyday thing. How did you deal with that? Uh, just keeping your head down. 
making sure that you always you remain focused on what you're supposed to do, and that is uh, get out every day, get out every day in the morning, go to the training, and try to perform the best in the best possible uh, you can. Uh, that I think uh, you need to keep reminding yourself that the rest, everything, you know, just follows. Uh, because today, if you play well, people will come and tell you that, oh, what a game that you played. And tomorrow, if you didn't have a not so good game, people will again, oh, you know, he wasn't in the space. And so I think uh, for us to realize, I think every footballer has to go uh, go through that, uh, that phase or that kind of, that particular moments uh, where people will definitely come and tell you that, oh, no, you're not so good. But you can't take it, like you know, to you know, to to you know, to to yourself. So uh, again, just just know your job. Uh, continue doing what you have to do. Remain focused. Uh, I think that's where the only. I don't think that there's any magic, uh, you know, formula uh, for you to tackle that. I think just that you need to just remain focused on what you are supposed to do. And I think uh, that that's how I, I did that. I don't know uh, what, about the other players, but that's how I did that. I just remain focused. Continue doing what I have to do. Uh, so yeah, and very much knowing that criticism uh, was very much part of your job, and that was okay. Yeah, that's a it's a very important attribute to have because many players their performances get affected because of criticism, but probably because you know how to deal with it, that's been helpful in what you have achieved so far. Now I want to take your view on on the ISL. So I'm going to read out a piece, uh, your exact words in a 2012 interview with India Today. You said one thing our football lacks is investment in youth and infrastructure. National team players get to play abroad, but it's important for every region to have good academies, right training, nourishment and technical assistance. India is not short of talent, but we need to be groomed to be at par with the best. So now, nine years later, do you think the in inception of the Indian Super League has improved things in Indian football? Yeah, it has. It has. Indian Super League definitely, uh, after seven years down the line, uh, very much. There's a lot, a uh, lot has improved. Uh, there's a lot, a uh, lot of things going on. But saying that, uh, we still have to do a lot more, uh, which is we are not, we are not, we are not there yet. Uh, yes, some work, some projects. There are certain uh, criteria even for the clubs to follow about having the grassroots, uh, you know, program going and running at the same time, having the youth system in place. Uh, I, we cannot deny the fact that some of the clubs already, uh, you know, uh, they are very committed and they are already doing some good work. Uh, that cannot be denied. But again, at the same time, uh, it's not just the ISL uh, clubs. What we need to do is also all the it should be a collective effort collective uh, from all collective effort from all the all the stakeholders so it, it's not all it's not only the club uh, responsibilities i think it's also with the state fa with the federation i think people, we all are you know doing a bit but we need to do a lot more uh, but we are on the right track and i hope that I, again i know that it need to speed up and I hope that uh, we can't deny the fact that we, there's some we are, some intentions are already there, and we are we are you know the ground is already running, but we need to make it like sprinting now. We need to make it faster. We need to make it quicker, and uh, because for us to catch up, because it's not just us who are working uh, and trying to get better, but even the other uh, the, the Asian countries as well. You know they also keep going. You know continue doing things what they've been doing, and so we need to we need to be, we can't be walking. We need to be sprinting like so to catch up with some of our fellow other uh, Asian countries. So there is, there is uh, work in progress. We do have to catch up. Now, another question yeah. this is for the defenders, for players who want to, 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 who want to base their game on your, your style. So you are very, very yeah. different with your headers and your strong tackles. Did you work specifically yeah. on these two attributes or did it just happen in training and in matches? Uh, Ryan, uh, if I have to take uh, it as a compliment, <laughs> uh, I do talk about the heading uh, and the tackles. I think that that was part of my job as a defender, right? I mean, when there's a ball for me to head, uh, head it out to, uh, you know, uh, t uh, take it away from the, the danger zone, I have to do it. And that was just part of my job. So I was just doing my job. Uh, and again, you come to the tackles. Yes, if I have to go for a tackle, then I go like 100 portion, uh, you know, then I have to go all, you know, everything that I can and just make sure that, you know, I do it right. But honestly speaking, uh, I, I have this back in my mind all the time, uh, th even this when I was playing. 
Uh, I also read this quote from the famous uh, legendary uh, defender, Paolo Maldini, when he said that the moment you decide that you're going to go for a tackle, uh, just, that, just remember that you already made a mistake. So you go for the tackle when you, either you were, uh, you know, just out of position or you had led for something or, you know, so you, so you already made a decision. That's the reason why you're going for the tackle. So I try, I think if I look back, I try as much as I can not to go for the tackle, uh, you know, as much as I can just to make sure to read the game and be there, you know, at the right time, the right place so that I can avoid all those tackles as much as I can. But if I have to go for it, okay, I have to go for it. But if I don't, uh, but I try to make it less as possible because I don't consider going for the tackle is yeah, it's part of the defending, it's part of the job, but I try to make it as less as possible. Always try to be on the ground, not going always for the tackle. Uh, you know, just be on the ground is more important than just going on the floor. So that is not something as a defender, as a centre back, I used to believe that. And that even today, I, 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 I keep telling this to to my players as well that uh, you know, just be on your feet, try to stay on the stay on the ground. Uh, tackle is something that it's, it's the last option for you to go for it, and you just don't go on the floor easily. You are and the, I came back to your, uh, yeah. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Just go on, go on. Yes, you were definitely way ahead of your time as far as yeah, I, I mean, in the I League. During a time where the focus was on clearing the ball quickly, you did manage to keep it on the ground, pass it to your right back. So those, that was that was good to see. Now that was obviously something that was noticed abroad. You have played for India against Australia, and you have also given a trial. You have given a trial with uh, Melbourne Heart. What's the difference between Indian football yeah. and the Australian football ecosystem? Well, Ryan, I am not sure that I'm qualified to really comment on that, the ecosystem, uh, you know, about these two uh, country. But yes, I had my share of experience because I was there for a couple of weeks uh, training with Melbourne Hearts. And it was a great experience for me uh, to be part of. Because I always believe when I was, I was, I was very much in my prime playing uh, for the club, regularly, you know, week in and week out for the national team. I wanted to go out and see that, can I, uh, you know, where do I stand? That was my question always, every day. This is what I'm talking about, you know, those those years when I was very much, uh, you know, in my prime. Uh, so I got this opportunity to go to Melbourne and playing against them is one thing, right? Playing against them is, we know you you play always some uh, play with some strong opponents, but I wanted, I wanted to be part of the dressing room. I want to see that uh, how do they prepare and uh, you know how 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 does uh, things uh, work there. So that is the reason why I went there. And keeping aside the infrastructure, definitely yes, they are uh, you know a little advanced when it comes to infrastructure. Already things are more organized when it comes to you know the football uh, in general. Uh, but again, purely I'm talking from as a player's perspective. Uh, then the culture was already. Little, I was a little ahead of us uh, about the professional professions that we talk about. So in our in our time, uh, what happened was it was only a bunch of us that who were part of the national team or who always get exposure to go out and try to learn and understand things or you know understand the game better. But not everyone's getting it because that that structure was not yet very much in all the clubs in the I League, for example, or the National Football League then. Uh, but it was totally coming in. It was, I think, probably in the transition where uh, things things have changed now very much. But I think those little things, maybe those Australians, when I went there. So even if you see uh, all the all the players in the dressing room, uh, they are more again, like I said, again, little in terms of uh, you know, little little they're a little advanced in terms of uh, understanding the game and you know about that attitude about you know they're trying to trying to achieve trying to win the desire. Uh, you know, it's not that we don't have it. I don't mean to say we don't have it. We have it, but the culture was a little more competitive than 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 what we were. That is what I I, I that's what I feel. But uh, very much we're on track, and uh, I think today is a different scenario. Things have uh, things have come a long way, and we still have to do a lot of work. But uh, yeah, we have we have come a long way. You have had some great experiences. So so far over the past 15, 20 minutes, we have looked at Gauramangi Singh, the player. Now we are going to move on to a little to another segment. I would call it Gauramangi Singh, the coach of today. So all my next questions are going to be along those lines. So starting off your little a little transition. So you told Times of India last year that Bob Hutton was the most influential coach in your career. 
So what exactly was it that made Bob Hutton a special coach? And also, were there any other coaches in your career who were a big influence on you? Uh, I think one of the reasons I mentioned Bob was uh, I spent a lot of time with him, under playing under him during uh, during uh, when he was uh, head coach for the national team. Uh, he was very aware of uh, aware of the th team strength and the weaknesses. Of course, that's a job of any coach to understand. Uh, you know, but he he understand the pulse of the team. Other than his strategy or planning how to go about the team, he also knows that the the capability. I mean, uh, how much the team can do or not do. I think that was a very uh, important strength that uh, you know uh, he he has. That is what I feel. So that is something that uh, we, we really like about him. On the personal front, he was a thorough gentleman and I think we all love him uh, probably. And also he, he, he creates us an environment that was very positive and it was very uh, competitive. And we all look forward to go to the national team whenever, once we're done with the league or if there was any international break. So that was a quality of him to, to create that environment where everyone looked forward to go there and to be part of it. And we, every one of us, this was I'm talking about during his era with the national team. Uh, so that was his quality, a thorough gentleman. And he was, I think, much ahead of his time also that he was, uh, he was such a, he was such a great leader. And I think even I, if I have to mention about some personal experience, when I say he was great, uh, in my, I mean, personally, in my, uh, you know, as a personal incident, I started as a defensive midfield and in my youth career. And it was Bob that who changed around my position from uh, defensive midfield to the center back from nowhere. But I, whatever he you know, saw in me, uh, that quality uh, during one of the national games, this was before we traveled to Doha for the Asian Games. Uh, I was still there in the camp as one of the, one of the players uh, competing for my place. And I was there, started playing with the, uh, in the defensive midfield. But uh, Bob, I think I remember having a chat. Bob just asked me just to have a chat and said, like, uh, you know, he was thinking that uh, I, I, you know, he wanted to try and see that, you know, how do, how do I, you know, cope with uh, a, a new position for myself? And then I play all the three games in Doha, uh, the, uh, you know, for the first time in a, in a, in a, in, a, in an international event, and which was a big stage for me to to play as a center, as a, as a you know, center back for the first time. And for that, I think credit goes to him. Uh, I think for someone as a coach to have that kind of, uh, you know, that vision and to see, uh, and eventually, uh, centre back became my, uh, yeah, my my best position, and I established myself as a player uh, in that centre back position. So, I just have personal experience, but uh, other than that, as a team, and we had a lot of success. I would say uh, in his five six years of uh, national team uh, as a manager when he was there. Uh, so, yeah, he was he was uh, was a manager. But uh, but besides uh, him, I of course I I mean as you said that who are the other coaches who I enjoy, but I not enjoy, but I would say rather you know they helped me to grow during those phases of my career. Some of the coaches, if I have to, four years, I spent in Jamshedpur and Ranjan sir, Vijay sir. I mean they literally grew me, taught me to play uh, how to play football. I mean I was I was young just. Just you know, just got from Hongsip, as you mentioned about the little town. We go to Zamsetpu, and those two coaches, uh, they were literally behind us, like you know, motivating us, pushing us. You know, a lot of uh, yeah, it wasn't easy that four years. Then many other coaches. Today, I, if I have to speak about Savio Madeira, uh, when you talk about the coaching, and he's the head of uh, uh, head of coaching department spent so many years uh, in the national team as when he was part of the technical team. Uh, played under him as well when he, when he became the national team coach. Uh, even today, he's, he's, he's a very much big part of uh, whatever decision that I took uh, so far as a player and also as a, as a, as a you know, transition to, to, to coaching. And he's been one of the mentors uh, all these years. And also, I met many other uh, coaches and personalities uh, like Elko when I was in prayer. Uh, you know, that kind of relationship that we had, uh, Marco, uh, you know, in Chennai, the experience, and they all come with a different experience. Uh, and um, 
I have, uh, yeah, even Habas uh, in in Pune. Uh, yeah, it was it was all very different uh, experiences, and that that it led uh, in my second season in the ISL with Pune. Uh, you know, I got to learn because I got to learn so much from them, and also they helped me. They helped me help me grow as a as a player, as a person. Uh, so I mean, just Khan. Uh, it's gone. Uh, I mean, I just have to be uh, th- remain thankful all my life for those those people. Uh, I mean, amazing people who helped me grow uh, and, or rather, become the player, the person I am today. And uh, since we are talking about coaches, could you also shed some light on the late Mr. Carlton Chapman? Oh, uh, <clears throat> again, he. Was our super senior? Let's put it that way, because he was from the first batch of Tata Football Academy, and I heard so much about him when I was in academy. There was so much of because coaches used to come and talk about him, uh, and already I was, I, 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 I mean, we all grown up in some way watching. There was not that much of telecast then, but I saw few games uh, uh, him with the Indian team jersey. Uh, then. I was fortunate enough that I got to spend few months with him towards the end of my uh, last year in Tata Football Academy. He joined as uh, as one of the mentor, uh, and we just formed a very strong relationship. We kept in touch uh, through and through. And uh, amazing person, not because I'm not saying it because today he's not here, uh, but we somehow managed to connect. Uh, and whenever we meet, uh, there was a lot of uh, yeah, there was a lot of pleasantries, uh, you know. And I had a lot of respect for him. Unfortunately, he's no more with us. Uh, but uh, he was a great player, as we all know. But uh, if many people don't know that how he was as a person, then he was he was as an, he was a very much a giving person. Uh, he was the one, honestly speaking. Okay, I'll give you this incident since you brought up about uh, uh, Chairman. Uh, when we were in Samsetpur, we were just an academic cadet. We don't have money. We get stipend some seven fifty bucks a month. And when we were, uh, so that was that's just a pocket money for us to buy whatever small little things and there. And I remember he took me to. I wanted to buy. I wanted to check a uh, few whatever some jersey or shirts uh, in in Adidas, but I don't have the money to go to the Adidas. So I remember him when when he came, we went and he took. Uh, you know, so for us to find that confidence when you don't have the money, you're very young and. But it was Chapman who came and said, like, hey, you want to buy this? You want to check on this? Let's go. Come on. So he took, you know, kind of even get the confidence for, he, he took us, a couple of us to, 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 to the, even to the Adidas store. Then I'm talking about this was early 2000. Uh, and I think those are the memories I have. I found fond memories and uh, huge, huge respect for him. Really nice. These are part of some memorable experiences that you can earn. It's never given to you. So you made the transition. You made the transition from player to coach in 2019. And also in your exact words to Sports Kida in 2020, coaching is a completely different ball game. So can you enlighten the Indian football community about what it's like to switch roles and how it is different, how playing and coaching is different, as well as what your advice is to players who want to become coaches? Uh, when I say the, the line... Uh... Coaching is a different ball game. Uh, I think it was just because so two different things. One, as a player, I'm talking about as a, when I was a player, I was only concerned and worried about uh, about myself. I think most of the time because everything that I do, as we have spoken about uh, the preparation and the pre-training or the post-training or the match or the post-match, uh, I was everything. I, what I was doing was for me to uh, you know uh, at least make myself available for all the selections, for all the matches and the training. Uh, so, and eventually try to help the team win. That was basically uh, always uh, focused uh, for, for a player. But uh, when, a coach, when, a, when you as a coach, uh, you're not only thinking about yourself, you're thinking about literally the entire, entire team, starting with the recruitment. Like who do you want to bring in, uh, you know, in your squad, and also a lot of also with the management, with the, with the board. It's a lot of uh, there's a lot of planning. There's a lot of planning 
playing uh, and coaching is a different ball game. Uh, so that was the only reason. And the second thing, uh, the second question of yours, uh, where you said that, what do you, what do I advise to to any player, any players who sort of have this thing back in their mind that uh, maybe once they're done with playing, uh, they want to get into coaching. Uh, I, I, I guess uh, one very important thing is uh, to understand, like you know, even when you were playing, you need to start the work there, uh, not like once you stop playing. Uh, this was one of the very, very important and crucial uh, advice that I got from Savio sir, uh, when we were traveling. So I remember this was towards the end of 2014 uh, when we were, uh, I think, 12 or 13, when we were in, uh, in the national team. He asked me from nowhere, just say, hey, have you thought about, uh, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, I was very much active and playing, uh, you know, I never thought about what I'm going to do after after football. But he was like, hey, have you thought, uh, just give a thought about, just, just, just a random thought that, what are you planning to do after 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 football? Well, uh, there was a, I was like, okay, uh, not really. So then he said, uh, if you're interested, uh, you know, just think about it. So the days are gone where you as a former player can just walk into any club and become a coach. Uh, so you have to complete, uh, you know, do your licenses. So that's when uh, I started my C license, uh, 2014 and 16, 19. So, you know, towards the end of 2019 uh, that I completed the A license. So uh, there's a process that which you have to have. So I think the preparation start not after you finish your playing career, but even towards the end of, or even during your playing career. And one thing what I've realized is, uh, so there, I think you as a player, what you can do is, you wanted to be the best possibly you can uh, be uh, in your position with the ball or without the ball. I'm talking a little bit on the technical side as a player in any position you can be, you can be a striker, you can be a midfielder, you can be a defender. So you're trying to be the best version of you, like in that, you know, in that particular position. So the other thing is there, you can start thinking about what are the roles from your, uh, you know, other, other teammates who are, Playing, say, if you are a defender, what do the striker do? What do the midfielder do? What do the wing halves do uh, when they have the ball and when they don't have the ball? So the roles are all different. So can I think from there, uh, I think all starts from there. That is what I feel. So for any active player who are playing now and who have the desire to to get into coaching uh, eventually, uh, I think uh, you, you need to start. I think it helps you as a as a player as well. Uh, you know, when you are playing, uh, understand the game better because. Uh, you know, learning never ends. Uh, even today, when we are learning even so much today. So I think that's a very small piece of advice that I would I would give to try to understand the game uh, other than other than what you can do or what you cannot do, but what are the other roles and responsibility about your other teammates. So I think just understand that game better. I think that will open up more horizon for you once you are, you know, once you decide that uh, you wanted to, you know, to try it. Uh, in, in coaching, I hope uh, I answered your question. Yes, some, yeah. Yes, that's some great advice so for all the players. They should just try and get their licenses in as early as they can. Uh, mm -hmm. Now you've done, you've completed the much coveted AFC A license, as you had mentioned. I'm sure most of the coaches at at whichever level they are, they have an intention of completing their AFC A license one day. It's become a you can call it like a gold standard. What have you learned on that A license? What are the topics they cover? And also, what is your advice for the candidates who will go on to an AFC A license course? Hmm. Uh, as we have mentioned, uh, the, the course uh, itself was an intense course. Let's put it that way. Uh, and the, it was a very compact and well-planned course, uh, which was divided into three modules. Uh, you know, through the season. So you are very much uh, into it. Uh, there's not a moment where you can't, uh, you can't just take it easy or relax uh, because you wanted to learn, uh, you know, in the best possible uh, way you can. Uh, so that is one, it was intense. Uh, it was so much that I got to learn, uh, that's one. And the second thing is my advice to any, uh, any, any, any applicants uh, would be 
you can't go to a course having a one way thought uh, because you might have a lot of experience uh, you as a player or you as a coach uh, but there what we all need to remember is when you are getting or getting into a course there will be other your learn you know everything that you can from there uh so that will be like just go with an open mind you can't go with a even when we have a group discussion i'm just getting a little insight uh, when you have a group discussion some coaches just come up with this idea or thoughts that oh this is the only way we have to do it but why are we in a course we are trying to have this open mind and see that what works or not works so that is why we all are there so you can't just go and when we have a group discussion of like four or five of us and one will say oh this is what i do in my club i said okay fine then maybe i have played also maybe five clubs ten clubs if i have said okay this is only window that's so with time thing change and everything so be prepared to be have this open mind otherwise sometimes uh, even the uh, the the group discussions just turn out to be like you know just a little i was a little mess among ourselves like you know because uh, some coaches will just start to like okay this is the only way i was like no let's, let's can we try something else can, can we offer to that that's why we are all here so that is i think one piece of advice i don't have too many advice to give but uh, that's that's one piece of advice and uh, it's uh, what savio sir is doing like you know when it comes to coaching education in, in our country i think uh, it is in good hand and he's doing he's doing a He's dedicated. He's giving a lot of time, uh, and he's doing a brilliant job. And I think we all are there. You know, I keep saying to him also that you know we, you have all our support. And uh, because education is so important, the coaching education. If you don't have good coaches, there's no way that you will you will uh, you will find a new talent coming up. So that is why probably I think we all as a growing up, our parents want us to go to. A good school, or you know, believing that you know that that school will provide us good education. So if you don't have good teachers, good coaches, no way that there will be good good students or good players coming up. So I think even I strongly believe that, and I I really support what what's going on, what you know, what Safiya is doing now. So for all of us, I think it's important that uh, you know uh, to to study and to get into the courses, and not just the courses, but all the other courses. At as much as you can, and try to understand the game better from different angles, different sides. Uh, that is what uh, that is what I'm trying to do, and uh, I hope it helps going forward. I think that's what I can say. Absolutely, yes, definitely doing a phenomenal job with transfer transforming uh, education. Yes, yeah, so you are uh, with Bengaluru United. You have got one of the stronger squads in the I League Second Division. You have got fantastic facilities, and you work with. Mr. Richard Hood, what is the club's philosophy and what are your aims for the future? Uh, we are taking, uh, I would say, we're taking one game at a time. Uh, yes, uh, I can't deny, uh, you know, with the fact that uh, we are, we had a great setup, uh, we had an amazing, uh, uh, you know, group of people working behind it, uh, the management, the board, the owner, uh, you know, that's a very I would say transparent uh, communication among all of us. There, we always to catch up, like you know, uh, you know, on a on a weekly. Day, uh, and uh, so I think those are the support that you know every club's needed, and I think we do have that. And the uh, so, but again, short term, long term. I think short term. I think what we are looking is uh, try everything that we can to to qualify to the I League. That's all what we are. Planning to do, and we are there. We are continue. Uh, we are doing it. Uh, and the long term, yes, uh, you know, with the kind of the the board and honor, they have a they have a long. I mean, we as a club has a long, uh, you know, the plan where we want to be, be part of the, uh, you know, in, in the in 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 the in the ISL at some point. But uh, we can't think about it. Uh, we don't want to talk too much. You know, important so emphasize too much on the ISL because that's not what we can do now. We, what we can do is to work really hard and at least hope that you know luck be on our side and uh, and just be there on the.
we can uh, you know just play well and just qualify that is what the club and uh, uh, then again uh, other than that uh, i think i'm very fortunate uh, during, uh, in this period of my transition from a player to the coaching uh, and having because, uh, because it's not because he's just my colleague but he is he's he's, he's amazing uh yeah 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 okay we got that Yeah so, us, no? uh, yeah so now a little continuation <laughs> about bengaluru united you both have are definitely a very good partnership mm. have there ever been times because now you are a elite player so you're right up there and now you're yeah. coaching a second division i league team has there ever been a feeling that you know when you watch them train that oh you know i can defend better than him i want to go and play and show him has that feeling ever happened if if so then how do you manage that No, not not really. I mean, uh, I think uh, I can't go with that mindset, and not not really. I mean, we had some of the. Uh, if you talk about, uh, you know, we, we got some good players, uh, some young players, and some senior players. For example, we talk about Primus today, uh, Robert, who was with us for the last, you know, uh, about a year. Uh, he's currently he's going to play in two qualifiers for the Trinidad and Tobago. I mean, come on, he's international, so I, I don't see that. I know they are doing really well. We have Robin, who's been part of the ISL I League. Uh, you know, I seeing him all these years. So and also some of the younger players, uh, and who are doing very well. I, I don't go to mindset. Yes, there are times when I say like, you know, I want you all to do. I know they can do better, and I want. I, I keep pushing that. You know, there's no way that you can relax. Uh, you know, just. you have to you have to you have to when you're on the pitch make sure that you give everything that you have because the, certain things are non negotiable so that's why i keep pushing but that's a completely on the coaching side but uh, yeah uh, again back to uh, you know uh, the most important thing again like i said uh, i'm being very fortunate that uh, you know in this phase of my career where i'm in transition from the player to a uh, coaches uh, to to coaching uh, you know that i having richard as my colleague uh, you know i think i'm i'm really blessed for that uh, because he is someone who is you know no question to his dedication and his passion and his hard work uh, but the most important is well informed uh, and uh, you know his knowledge when it comes to football is, is so much and uh, i just want uh, you know uh, him to do well going forward uh, because eventually uh, a successful coach is always defined by how much uh, trophies he win and how much matches he win uh, but we all as upcoming young coaches but uh, i i can uh, you know i i i'm so much confident that uh, you know he will do well going forward as long as we are working together we we will try to achieve uh, as much as we can try to win as many matches as possible but uh, yeah in one line i think he's um, he's a uh, boon to in that football i mean uh, he's a uh, big asset this and uh, not i'm just not praising it but uh, yeah he helped me and uh, i think he deserved to not uh, you know i don't say so loudly uh, you know <laughs> with him when we sit together but maybe just taking this uh, platform with you guys uh, i'm telling him that uh, you know he's uh, he has a long way to go and uh, yeah he's a, he's a great guy he's a great person not just as a coach but yeah uh, so uh, it, you know from my perspective i'm doing my job i'm trying to help him as much as i can uh, preparing whatever i can but uh, yeah good to have a, a colleague uh, where you know just we get along well and uh, we yeah so that's it. sorry short i'm sure i'm trying to be very happy to hear that yeah so now we have understood quite a lot about goramangi singh the coach mm. we are just going to go into a last one question followed by a little one word yeah. answer segment so now before we go on to the one word answer segment you have played with both bhaichung bhutia as well as sunil chetri mm. they both are arguably the players who have taken indian football onto the global road map what is it that makes both those players so special in a simple word uh both of them since you mentioned about these two name uh bhai and uh, sunil uh they work harder than any one of us that i think uh, that's just the only uh, one line answer if i have to give uh 37 years sunil still I'm still uh, one of the best uh, 
player that we have in the country. And I can bow for him is because uh, I've spent so many years, even you mentioned, I think uh, that I was part of some 70 games for the country and he was there as well, all, all the 70 games. We started off more or less together. And a uh, number of times when I talked Boston Hill, then, uh, yeah, we ended up many times in the gym when some of the, yeah, some of our colleagues are not uh, not there, maybe resting, but number of times when it comes to extra training, extra recovery, a uh, lot of things, uh, we, I mean, it will be a never ending, but he deserves what, uh, you know, what, what he achieved so far. And I think he will continue to sign I mean, going forward for the next couple of years. That's why I keep saying whenever I meet or get to get a chance to talk, I said like, you know, probably you're the last person standing tall there, you know, in the, in the squad today, uh, you know, and uh, it will be nice to see you for a couple of more years, uh, you know, holding that flag, at least for our generations. And, uh, and that's, uh, I think that's the beauty of him. Uh, and by, by, I can't, I can't, I mean, uh, he's, a, he's a, you know, we all grown up watching, uh, and I grown up watching him. Uh, and uh, uh, what a guy, I mean, the hard work is there, but uh, the dedication, uh, all those 50 50 chances converting to a goal. Uh, the, I mean, uh, that's why they are, that's why he's a watching coach, yeah. Uh, that's why today uh, he's a Sunil Setri. And uh, yeah, I mean, huge respect for both of them. Uh, amazing people, uh, like uh, born winners. Uh, I mean, they don't still for for the second second base. Uh, that's why huge respect. So you have mentioned uh, the power of hard work. The say, it, this is the second time you have mentioned it. So that shows how important it is to succeed in football with hard work. Now the yeah. next and last segment. Here there's a little condition. Yeah. You can only answer with one word. And, and there might be one or two questions that you might find challenging. So let's see how this goes. So the first one, which one team did you enjoy playing for the most? Only one team. Churchill Brothers. Churchill Brothers, okay. Uh, which is your most memorable match as a player? Then I should have two. I mean, if I have to take about like one in the club, then one in the country, then one for the country. No, <laughs> I'm putting you a condition now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is your most memorable match as a coach? Uh, no, I mean, uh, as a coach, uh, because recently, because uh, we won, uh, you know, in the last ma last day, we won the uh, BDFA League, uh, which was important, not just for the team, but for the players, uh, because we work really hard. So that's why I said the BDFA League last match, I forgot which was against uh, the last match, which was important because I want, I want, you know, I, I want so much for the boys to win it because we work so hard. We put in, we put a process. Okay, sorry, that I'm just taking it long, but we put a process and for them to believe it, they need to win something. And that, that's what they have been doing week in and out. So when they win, they believe it more that, okay, this works. So that was very important. I said, as a coach, the last match when we won the BDF League, that was very, very important for, uh, it was in the last day itself, it was very important for us to, uh, to, to win that. And you talk about the uh, memorable matches. There's so many memorable matches. Uh, you know, for Only the one? Clubs, so <laughs> if you had to choose one? <laughs> if I have to choose one. Hmm. I have to choose one. Mm. Uh, this is the this is the downfall of achieving so much in life. <laughs> uh, all are important, but I'll just choose one. When I got uh, my senior team debut, uh, I played for the club and uh, in everything, but senior team debut against Syria in Nehru Cup in Delhi. Uh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, the debut match. Uh, something that you worked so hard over the years and when you get the opportunity, I mean, you acted for all the age group and it was so many memories and experience, so much of learning, but uh, uh, eventually you wanted to be part of the senior team squad and you work so hard and you earn it. And I think there was a there was good, good, uh, good, good memory. Okay. And uh, now which footballer did you idolize growing up? Uh, not idolize, idolize, but uh, one player, if I just mention one player, then I thought he was just beyond anything, beyond anyone, uh, crazy talent, 
that Brazilian Ronaldo. Uh, he was, when I was growing up, uh, he was just too good. Just love him. I know he's a striker. He's not a defender. I mean, doesn't have to be, but uh, just love uh, watching him. His skills, his talent, he was, was magic. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you've played against many foreign strikers in the I-League. If you have to pick one from Odafa, Dudu, Ranti, Chidi, Barreto and Yakubu, if you have to pick one. Odafa. I've spent five years with him. Yeah, Odafa. Not, yeah, good, crazy. Good. It's too good. He was, he was, okay. he was, he was one of the best strikers yeah, those, those days. And uh, which, was the, which was your toughest opponent? Opponent? As a team. So one player, so one player who you who you have found the hardest to play against. Uh, hardest to play against. Um, uh, 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 I would say Bai Chung Pai. And uh, okay, I mean the rules are one word answer, but let's break that rule. Why would you say so? Uh, he, uh, it just, because some of the goals I remember, you know, uh, because after knowing him, I mean, I was fortunate to be, again, like, you know, sharing dressing with him and uh, train with him in the national team, then towards the end of his career, you know, got to, got to play against him. There was times when I thought, like, he's not going to do anything. You know, he was just walking there or, you know, not making that impact. But suddenly from nowhere, uh, he just turned up and just scored a goal. And I was like, man, you know, like I was really, uh, you know, all through the 90 minutes, you're trying to defend him. Uh, and it looks like that's not, there's no, uh, he, he's done and there's not much for me to do or, you know, the, for the entire back line is to do. And suddenly he just pop up and uh, he just scored. So that's a little, uh, so example, again, I play against Yapubu or Pareto. I mean, I don't have really good, you know, uh, some of the legendary strikers that played in, in our country, in our league. And the, uh, you know, I have to be always on my toes and, you know, always having sometimes they win and I sometimes I win and, you know, we always battle, like, you know, we have, because they were part of the National League or the ILEA for many years and I've been part of it. So we always play against each other, some, you know, some, <laughs> some time or the other. But why well, that, that specially that I would say is he just pop. I was like, pop. When he came again, he scored. So sometimes when you are like done, but suddenly uh, he just, he just appear again. That's great. It was really good. So, yeah. uh, Mangi Bhai, on behalf of the Indian Football Portal, immense, a big thank you to you for accepting to, to do an interview. And more than just this being an interview, it's definitely going to be a learning experience for a lot of viewers because they're getting the perspective of someone who's been a player at top level as well as a coach at senior professional level. So, thank you once again, and I'm going to transfer the, uh, the floor to Arches, who would like to end it. Okay, thanks a lot, uh, Mr. Gaurmangi Singh. Thanks for attending this interview. It was my immense pleasure to have you over here. And I would also like to thank Ryan for conducting this interview. Thanks a lot, Ryan. Thanks, 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 Arches. Thanks, Ryan. So, stay safe and uh, yeah, up to yeah, see you guys.